Hello. This video is a review of the opening moves played by one of the great British chess players, Grandmaster Keith Arkell, one of our own against members of the Hammersmith Chess Club. It was a simultaneous exhibition played in the Chess 960 format. Each game had a different starting position and the lead chess platform randomly allocated colors. Keith had white in four games and black in four games and he won all eight. But it was not easy going, and it was especially not easy in the opening stage. The Hammersmith Chess Club members were at a slight advantage because there had been a workshop on opening principles in 960, also available on YouTube. And as it came out, Keith fared worse in the openings than the ordinary club members. But in the end, the grand mastery of Keith overtook them all. In this video, we remain within the first five moves. In our workshop on 960 opening principles, we learned that similar principles apply as a normal chess. Normal chess and specific principles in 960 here. These are not necessarily formulated, however, in the way <coughs> the general principles in the way as it is necessary in 960. Control the center ideally with double move of central pawns. But also look at which of the central or and C and F pawns helps the next principle. Develop your pieces. Have you opened diagonals for bishops? As a normal chess, it is mostly the knights which come out first. And indeed, there are nice additional squares for the knights on B3 and G3 or B6 and G6 for black. Bring your king to safety. At the very beginning, look at where your king is located and how many moves it might take to castle short and long. Short, in standard chess terms, may indeed be a very long way if your king is on the far left and you first have to remove five pieces. And now to the games. I will now go one by one through all the eight games in the same way. First, I will show the opening setup in the specific 960 arrangement, which was randomly given by the lead chess provider. Here in this one game, number 29, which is an international defined number. Uh, then I will show what um, I found out using the engines Lina, which is an Alpha Zero engine, um, LC0, what that engine proposes as the first moves, as the first move, or indeed in the combination, the whole setup, um, and what is, according to Lina, the success ratio for that specific position. And we see that position by position, it changes, it varies, uh, can be as low as 53%, can be as high as 63%. Then in the next line, I show always the first five moves played by either Keith Arkel or our club member. And after move five, I show how Lina evaluates the position from the white, white point of view. So it is an indication whether with this setup, um, which side has um, fared better in the opening. And um, then I will, in a second uh, picture, show how indeed uh, the moves were played in the opening. Now, this is the first setup, start position 29. Keith has the white, place, the white pieces. We see that the kings are already in the corner, close to the corner. Uh, so why could white could directly go for short castling, just moving f3, um, bishop f2, and castling. But that would mean giving up the center. So the engine, Lena, proposes first central pawn pushes e4 and d4. Um, but also the knight moved to b3, a very common uh, development of the knight. Uh, for us, very uncommon to see the knight development to b3, but that's very common, especially the knight here is in the corner and needs to be uh, improved. Um, or also the bishop development via h2, 
So here the move h3 as a first move is one of the preferred choices by Lina. h3, bishop h2, and short castling. And more or less, that is also the concept with both, which both players were following in the first five moves. You see central pawn uh, moves indeed by both players, f3, c3, um, supporting the pawn structure and knight to b3. Here we see how the players, White, Keith Arkell, um, moved their pieces in the first five moves. More or less simultaneous, a very common theme also 960, because of course the starting position is a very authentical for identical for black as well. Now here black um, was not accurate by playing bishop to f6 and immediately the valuation valuation by Lina um, improved from for white from 50 something 56 percent or so to eight percent. So here uh, the black bishop uh, blocks uh, the development of the white bishop. Um, the f-pawn can't move. Of course, the black bishop can develop via h7, but there it is against the uh, blocked center. So um, indeed here, after exchange on e5, knight development with tempo d3, uh, white was quickly uh, increasing his advantage. Here is game two. Chess 960, start position 41. Keith has white. 55% um, normal um, positive evaluation for white. Um, also here, the kings are already in the corner, both kings, white and black. Only the other rook on f1 needs here to be moved to get out of the way for, uh, to allow white and black castling. But we have time for that. First, develop the center, the principle, pushing central or close to central pawns. Indeed, um, Lina proposes to push the queen side pawns, d4, c4, b4. Um, and as the first piece development, again, the knight to b3. And um, in the game, um, however, both players develop their knights not to b3 first, but to c3, maybe that's more, um, um, common or more familiar to <laughs> develop the knights to c3 and c6. Um, I wonder whether indeed that is anti-positional uh, because the queen is on c1 and the bishop on d1, so typically the c-pawn would uh, want to be pushed to allow uh, queen and bishop to uh, leave. Um, Leechens does not treat this as an inaccuracy, uh, but the valuation is already uh, slightly favorable for black indeed. So Lina uh, thinks um, indeed c4 pawn move first would have been better. Um, I would also consider h4 which the, both players played again um, copying each other um, as not the best. The engine prefers immediate f4 uh, to open the lines for the bishop and the rook um, because it's not only like h4 allowing the rook to leave, but f4 allows theoretically the rook to leave, plus opens a diagonal for the bishop, and also f4 attacks the pawn center. This is how the first moves were done in the order. Um, I indeed wonder whether 960, look at this move h4 done by Keith Arkell, uh, whether 960 might bring out the true self not restricted by standard opening lines, but free to do what you always wanted to do. Maybe in this case, with an early attack by the rook via f3. Just a thought, Keith. Game three, chess 960 start position 676, Keith S. White. Here we see the kings are on their normal start position, at usual start position e1, e8, and even the king side rook on h1 and h8. Uh, that looks familiar. Only on the queen side, queen and rook have exchanged their places. And so a queen side based forward pawn push is expected with d4 and c4. That's also one of the preferred moves 
um, supposed by Lena, and then only king's side castling after the knight moves uh, to f3 and to g3 or e3. So the players followed partly that proposal. Indeed, it seemed here that uh, black was more strictly, uh, more systematically following the opening principles than white. And indeed, after five moves, Keith had already lost his opening advantage. Here we see the first five moves, knight f3, d5 looks like a ready. Now Keith um, followed it up with b4, not b3, which <laughs> would be indeed a, a typical ready opening. Um, uh, he exchanged then his fianchetto bishop against the knight on f6. And then, which sounds, which looks even worse, uh, locks in his queen with the pawn move c3. So then, uh, after five moves, indeed, white um, looks a little depressed compared to black. Uh, black more naturally developed the bishops um, having open diagonals. And indeed, uh, Lena said this is 50 50 uh, by the valuation. In four, um, 960 start position 932, Keith S. White again. Um, as so often, the first uh, preferable moves are d4 and e4 in the center, also in this position. Uh, a4 is among the preferred moves by Lina. That looks a little strange um, as a first move. Um, and indeed, um, when you uh, give this game to a stockfish evaluation, stockfish does not um, follow that um, proposal. Uh, it might be good for the development of two pieces, the rook and the bishop, um, but it does nothing actually for the center. Now, um, the game um, developed um, anyhow differently. White did not go for the open set, did not go for the central pawn pushes. Uh, Black did indeed. The valuation did not change very much. Um, and um, so let's see how indeed uh, the game came to this um, position after five moves. So in the game, um, development knight g3, like, like B, knight b3, I like these uh, knight moves. Um, of course, when there is a knight in the corner, then you never bring this out uh, quickly. Um, stockfish. Um, which is the engine which Lee Chess uses, criticizes Keith's second move, c4. Um, it's not immediately clear to me why, because it opens the diagonal for the bishop, b1. Um, maybe because it also opens the diagonal, um, or it, it opens the position for the king. Um, so, um, I mean, it looks like an English opening or reverse Sicilian. Uh, you don't necessarily castle then to that side um, when you have played uh, c4 or c5 uh, as black. So I can imagine um, it's because white's king would um, prefer to the castling, would in principle prefer castling uh, long uh, because it's already there. And due to that reason, lean stockfish uh, doesn't um, uh, propose uh, the, pawn, the, the, the pawn move c4. Um, in such a case, indeed, the pawn might be better placed on c3, um, which also opens up the diagonal for the bishop. Um, and also this pawn on c3 supports a strong center, pawn center on d4 and e4. Indeed, the game developed further than black, seemed to have a more systematic uh, development um, with a central pawn. Moves, of course, the queen has, is losing a tempo, uh, but indeed in the follow-up of the game, both sides castled long and white was much more exposed there on this side due to the missing c pawn. And um, that was one of the reasons why, um, uh, why white had to fight very hard uh, and only the grandmaster um, made it uh, winning. Now game number five, um, chess 960 opening position number 81. Um, all heavy pieces are 
and also the king are already on the king's side. This starting position was the most difficult for me to understand. Lena um, seems to go for an immediate all-out attack um, against the king, opponent's king's side, g4 and h4 among the um, pawn pushes first preferred uh, moves. So, um, of course, then opening the long diagonal uh, as well with e3 um, or g3 for the queen, e4 as well, um, of course, and um, um, also uh, b3, um, opening the long diagonal for the bishop. Uh, of the central pawn, only e can be pushed, only that gives an advantage. d doesn't open any diagonal, and neither for <laughs> a diagonal for the bishop or the queen, nor a file for the rook. So indeed here also we see uh, in the game of the simultaneous exhibition that both sides seem to uh, go forward with their pawns on the king's side. Now how did it go? Of course we see also that uh, white lost um, a huge advantage in the opening moves already, so black apparently developed his pawns better than white. E4, standard opening, the human-like um, approach. Um, okay, that's that's still fine. It opens a diagonal for the bishop and indeed um, also the file for the rook. Um, black played um, h5, the first uh, of the players to follow the suggested pawn pushes on the king's side first on move three, uh, possibly against a white g4, uh, which the engine now uh, not being the first to push, uh, the engine considers this as an inaccuracy. Um, so after five moves, um, the engine says black has a relatively good advantage, 60% in favor of black, um, which is um, very much after five moves. Um, for me, I think white has a temporary development advantage could castle relatively quickly after developing the bishop a1, just b3, bishop b2, or here already on the long diagonal, and then already developing. Um, so um, that would be my thinking, but the engines clearly favor black in this position. Game number six, <clears throat> 960 starting position, 352. I like this game very much. <laughs> it's my own. Um, the king is on its standard place here. Um, Keith Arkel had black. Um, so all the um, heavy pieces are surrounding the king. Um, the idealistic opening concept can be followed. Central pawn pushes c4, d4, um, opening diagonals b3 for the bishop, um, f um, for the queen. Um, and white followed that approach uh, very conceptually. Black might have done the same, but indeed that's a matter of taste. Black more developed more closed, but it's still okay, even though black got under pressure. We see how the game developed. Clearly white dominates the center. Um, Maybe white overdid it now with the pushing the pawn d5, um, the pyramid <laughs> structure of the pawns, um, and the further push uh, d6. Um, indeed, now um, um, there should be have been a different continuation um, for a further advantage of white. But that's already middle game, and that's very much similar than to normal standard chess. Game number seven, 960, starting position 410. Keith again is black. Here the kings are already safe in safe corners. Castling is possible after the bishops on f1 and f8 are developed. So the attention can directly be um, um, focused towards the center. Uh, e4 or e5 development for the bishop. Um, c4 for the queen. Uh, then, um, of course, you can also move only e3 um, or c3. Um, so that's 
shown up also in the game, even though that's slightly developed differently. Um, and indeed, um, white developed a, a bigger advantage after five moves, um, having increased from 56 to 66, the evaluation. This is how it developed, knight c6, the kind of Philidor opening. Um, so black prevents the perfect center e4, d4 with knight c6. Um, but then, and black itself um, establishes a pawn, central pawn. But then the knight movement to d6 for me looks anti positional. Why would you want to block uh, your central pawn and also the bishop? Um, so white could have indeed exploited this uh, now with a temporary pawn sacrifice f4, um, but winning the pawn back um, after. Um, sorry, not here, but here f4, and winning the pawn back after bishop d2, um, but even closing the center with d5, exchange, uh, achieved a position favorable for white. Game number eight, 960 starting position 578, Keith is black. The kings are on the normal spots and short castling is possible just after moving the bishops, the F bishops. Uh, all pawn moves um, opening up diagonals for the bishops or the queen are considered good by Lina, c4, g3, b3, e3, um, proposed first moves. So this game is the game with the worst development um, for Keith after five moves. White has increased its opening advantage from 59% to 90%. So what happened? This is the for black, normal e4 for white. Um, now e5, that's now after six moves. Um, so what do we see? What do we recognize here as key figures in this opening position? White has a huge development advantage. Bishop diagonal opened, knight from the corner developed, the other knight already in the center attacking indeed uh, um, piece. Um, so um, white has brought out um, the, or both of the king side um, light pieces. Um, now, um, black lost a uh, um, lost, uh, uh, tempo fianchetto in the king side bishop, um, and that's already blocked by, the, by its own pawn on e5. Uh, then the knight on c6 blocks the long diagonal for the bishop. And what is more important, it blocks the C pawn, which needs to move to let out the queen. So um, white subsequently made clever use of her development advantage, indeed by F pushing F4 already quickly. Um, both have castled, but um, white has a clear advantage. Okay, from here on, it was middle game. And of course, the grandmaster came out and finally won the game for black. So these were all the eight games of the simultaneous, 960 simultaneous by Keith Arkell. Uh, what do we all learn from that? Um, yes, it's true. Ultimately, also 960, it is the chess competence which decides the day. But before that, opening competence can still make a huge difference. And that's where, at the moment, um, there are no, te no textbooks yet. Um, of course, in 960, it does not mean learning of opening lines. There are just too many different um, setup positions. Here, it is the understanding of the 960 adjusted opening principles, like those formulated here. Also in chess 960, pattern recognition is a major theme. But you need a broader mind indeed for that than in standard chess. More patterns to be recognized. Good luck with 960.